Welcome to part three of my building a new computer series, or whatever the heck I'm going to call it. So at the end of the last part, I was thinking of starting out by probably installing some fans inside of the case. Because the clearances, especially on the bottom and the back, are going to be pretty tight for the fans. So before I put in like the video card and stuff, I figure I should put in the fans. Um, however, I realize there's actually something I should probably do before even that, and that is put in the M2 drive. Because that goes, well, I think on the front of the motherboard. I know it's going to be small, but the question is, how small? Like, I'm not actually sure. Oh my god! It's so small! That's it. I mean, you don't need any wires or anything like that. <laughs> this is a one terabyte SSD. I cannot believe how small it is. So this is an M2 SSD. M2, or M.2, is a form factor. Um, it's not actually a different type of connection. Like, it's this one specifically, as it says here, is a SATA M.2. So a normal SSD is this one that I took out from my old uh, computer. This one is also a SATA SSD. So they both connect by SATA. So it's just the form factor that's different. The actual connection protocol is the same. Although, I don't know, this one could be like SATA 6 gigabits per second or whatever. This one might be a slower version of SATA. But either way, they're both SATA. So what I'm wondering is, if it's just a form factor, is this what's inside of this? I think that's where it connects, and then this little screw is what tightens it down. I think? I know there's different sizes of M.2 drives, so it looks like this little thing that tightens it down could go into one of any of these three holes, so I'm guessing that's how you adjust for the size of the M.2 drive. Oh, oh, it goes up there? Aha! There we go. So it looks like it's kept under some tension. So it's snapped in, and if you just leave it there, you can see it actually presses up a little bit. Okay, well that seems to be it. It's, uh, hmm. I'm not sure if this is how you're supposed to do it, although I can't think of any other way. This side is up. This side is down. Is that okay? I don't think so. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I was about to search for how to install it online, but I think I actually figured it out. So this was installed in the motherboard and I took it out thinking that this needs to be put on top. On top of this little notch. Like this. But I don't think that's it. I think it's supposed to stay in the motherboard as a standoff. Just like a motherboard standoff. I was able to tighten it, and it fits in sort of with Phillips. Actually, no, not sort of. It definitely fits in with a Phillips head screwdriver. So I thought, eh, it's just a kind of weird looking thing, but you're just meant to use a Phillips head in it. But I think there's actually a little place in there for another screw. So this is the standoff, and then the screw goes into it, I think. And I bet the screw is that weird, tiny little screw that came with the motherboard. Remember when, we, when I took that out and said, what the heck is this? A single screw. Ha <laughs> ha, it is! It threads into the center! Okay, that makes more sense. There we go. Look at that beautiful little thing. I love how that slots in. It is a little bit weird to install, but now that I've done it, it's not hard at all. It's so small, and it's so big, and it's so fast. It's small, in literal size, big in capacity, obviously. And damn fast. That is so impressive. Now it's time to take a look at the fans and see what we can do with them. Ow. <laughs> Cardboard almost cut me. Comes with a bunch of screws, although the case itself also comes with screws, which I think I'll probably use first because they are black. These might stand out a bit too much. Yeah, I love how tightly these are packed in here. Look at this. Not a single millimeter wasted. Beautiful. Is there anything more beautiful than a stack of... PWM 120 millimeter fans. I don't know if 120 millimeter fan sizes or thicknesses rather are standardized, but it looks like it's very slightly thinner than the Noctua fan. Well, let's install at least one of the fans. This one I can obviously do, and it's not going to get in the way of anything or anything. I believe these fans push air in the towards the direction where they don't have the exposed uh, motor, right? So it's going to push air this way, I believe. 
so I'd want this like this. I don't know, I keep doubting myself because there's no actual arrow on the case of the fan that indicates what direction it blows, but like I'm 99% sure. So this one's definitely going to be like this, obviously on the inside of the case. It's going to be blowing out, it's going to be exhaust. So all the air that's getting blown through the heat sink is going to go just pretty much straight out of the case into another fan. So that's going to be really good for temperatures, I think. Ah, right. Every fan I've ever installed, I think, is like this. I guess it's just how they are. They don't have threads. I don't know, maybe plastic threads aren't really a thing, I guess. But yeah, they don't have threads, so that means when you screw it in, you're going to have to make the threads, which means uh, you're going to want to make sure that the screw is very straight, otherwise you will make non-straight threads. Uh, you're going to have to push really hard, probably. It doesn't feel good. I don't like it. I think what I'm actually going to do is pre-thread them. Oh, that was exhausting. All right. <laughs> One fan in, probably four to go. What I'm wondering is, how do I install these other ones? The bottom ones, obviously the fans go on top, which would mean they must be screwed in from the bottom. I guess if I remove this air filter, I'll probably have access to the screw holes. Yeah, I think so, so I'll have to flip this thing over. Uh, but I wonder about the front. So I think my best bet is to have these actually as exhausts, so both fans would be facing this way. And I'm trying to think of how I install them. They're definitely supposed to be here, not on the inside. On the inside would just be ridiculous. And if I'm gonna install them here, I need to screw them in from the opposite side. The problem with that is that I don't think there's any real straightforward or good way to remove the front of the case. I don't think it's really meant to come off. I think what I'm supposed to do, I guess, is just take this thing out, the fans mount to, and actually just take it out, put the fans on it, and then put it back in. Oh, it's actually even easier than I thought. These screws that I saw here, these aren't actually... These screws aren't actually keeping it in at all. That's completely unrelated. Um, it's just these two screws here that keep it in, and then it's kind of wedged against these little plastic or metal like plus symbols that keeps it moving uh, keeps it from moving on that side and yeah that's it god i really love the construction on this even this thing which you can see it doesn't really have much material to it is still very strong like this is seriously heavy duty i can barely bend it at all which is good because i'm going to be putting a lot of force into this trying to screw in the two fans if this was flexing and bending it'd be a little bit disturbing Okay, got it installed. Um, I decided to use the screws that came with the fans, which don't really match the color of the case because these are going to be put in like this. You're going to be seeing it from this side on the inside and you can't see the other side because the front of the case is covered. So uh, they're going to be pretty much invisible and there is not enough case screws that are black for fans to do all the fans. So I figured I'd put the ones that I don't care about seeing up here as exhaust fans, I think these are actually going to do a surprisingly good job exhausting air. Certainly not as good as if there was just a mesh right here in front, then they'd have a much easier time blowing air out. So there are, they are going to be forced to blow air sideways into the honeycomb that's on the opposite side. But they've done a really good job at encouraging the air to go through the honeycomb rather than recirculate, for example. There's a perfect hole that's almost exactly the right size for the opening in the fan on this plate here. So the fans themselves form a pretty nice seal. Seal's probably not the right word, but you know. Up here, there's a, a metal plate that's part of this bracket so that the air is encouraged to go out the side rather than uh, up here. Because if this was open, that'd be pretty bad. These fans would blow air forwards and then a significant amount of it would just be blown up and back into the case. But that's blocked off. You know, it's, it's far from airtight, of course. There's lots of holes. There's a hole here and there's the whole open... Um, the air can also get out here where the cords are supposed to come through. So there's definitely holes, but it's still heavily encouraged to go through the honeycomb. So I think it's actually going to be pretty good. Now the big question is, what about the bottom fans? Will they fit with the video card? The video card is two and a half slots tall. How tall is this? Yeah, that should be fine. It's almost exactly one slot tall, so there's going to be... <laughs> There's going to be half a slot in between the video card and these fans. Oh, that's going to be weird. I hope that's not a problem. 
we'll see. I'll do some thermal testing. Uh, I'm thinking it's either going to be really good for the video card because it's going to have two fans blowing directly on it, basically touching it, or it could be really bad. I can't think of why it would be bad, though. As long as these bottom fans are on, it should be fine. If they were off, then they would obstruct the airflow going into the video card. But if they're on, it should be fine, right? Okay, there is a problem, actually. I believe I can still put the fans in, but I can't do them just yet because uh, the fan is going to be almost exactly here, where it is now. But the thing is, at the very bottom of the motherboard, there's all this stuff. That's the system fan connection over there on the left, but also most of these are things that connect to the front panel of the case. So I need to plug all these in before I install the fans because I will not be able to plug anything in with the fans in the bottom. Okay, this is where we start getting into cable management in hell. So I fed in all the stuff that comes from the front panel into, well, in here. So we got all sorts of things such as we have HD audio. I believe this is the connector for the USB 3.0 connections up there. These tiny two pin connectors are for the hard drive LED showing you hard drive activity, the power switch, the reset switch, and this, I don't actually know what this is. So the motherboard manual has a diagram that shows you exactly where to connect all these little connections. Do you know how hard it is to connect these three separate connections? Oh, man. Oh, I figured out what this connection is, by the way. Um, it's the power for the LEDs in the front. If I want to give a power, I'm going to have to connect one of these modular connections to the power supply. I think this will be the only one I need. It seems kind of wasteful and annoying to have this whole bundle of wire just for, <laughs> just for the LEDs in the front, but it's not really going to matter because I pulled that power connection out to the front because I thought it would connect to the motherboard, but it doesn't actually need to. It just needs to connect to power, so I can actually shove it back behind on the other side and just leave it there. Fans are installed. All right, so I managed to fit all five fans in here, which is kind of incredible. We'll see for sure once I put in the video card, but given that I already measured it, I'm like 95% sure that it'll fit. As you can see, though, it's starting to get a bit, well, annoying with all these cords, and I don't even have the power cords in here yet. So it's time to start doing some cable management. So there's something interesting about these fan connectors. If you notice, each fan actually has two different connectors. The reason for that is you could basically daisy chain these together. So, for example, what I can do and what I'm going to do is for both of these bottom fans, I'm going to connect this one actually do it right now. Um, this left fan is already connected with its main connector into SysFan, I think it's SysFan 1 over there. So this fan over here, I could connect it into the daisy chain thing of the left fan. So what this means is that basically if I set the fan speed on SysFan 1, it's going to affect this fan and it's also going to forward the power and the signal and everything to this fan. So essentially it allows you to control multiple fans with one connector to the motherboard, which is very good because this motherboard only has three fan connectors and I have, well, five fans that I just installed plus this one makes six. Let's do some cable management planning. That's pretty good looking. I'm not done with all the wires, of course, but I was just focusing on the fan wires specifically. I've sorted these into two groups aside from the CPU fan, which is just connected to its own thing, of course. The front two, this one's daisy chained to this one, and then this one is daisy chained to the back one, and then this one is connected to SysFan 1. So SysFan 1 is going to control the two fronts and the one back, with just one connection. Uh, I'm grouping those together because those are the ones that I'm like 99% sure I'm definitely going to want to turn on and will not cause any problems and will only make the case cooler. The ones I'm not so sure about are the bottom two. So this one is daisy chained to this one and then this one is connected to SysFan 2. I think it's time to put in the memory and then the video card, so let's open up this Corsair Vengeance. Still makes me sad that this should have been like 70 bucks, but it was 150 because Memory prices have been doubled for like a year. There we go. Sticks look pretty good. They have a little heatsink on it, which is what I'm used to. And usually I go with G Skill memory, but this actually has a heatsink that I like more. Like G Skill tends to have these big teeth that kind of come up even more off of the heat off of the heatsink. Oh 
Okay, memory is in, I think. It always disturbs me how hard you have to press to get the memory in. Like, it's really hard to the point where you're flexing the PCB of the motherboard a lot. Because the furthest right that this is uh, connected to the case with standoffs on the motherboard is that screw right there. So this one here is a little bit to the right of it, so it bends the board a bit when you're pressing hard. And this one here is even further to the right, so you gotta like really, really press it. And you can see the flex. It's disturbing. It's time for the final piece of the puzzle, the final piece of hardware to install inside. Oh my god, it's a huge EVGA poster. And some stickers. Max! A maximum enthusiast built. Bad gradients plus outer glow. Oh, this is the cheesiest thing. I'm not putting this on my wall. It's basically like a big sci-fi poster, ostensibly for a movie. It's got credits listed like a movie, except of course it's not. It's just like, look at what we have. World class, starring world class service. Sci-fi thingy in space. EVGA. This is actually kind of cool. I think it's like a sticky medallion. It's not a sticker. It's actually metal. Like, I can't even bend it. It's very, very sturdy. I'm not going to use it for anything. I don't like putting brands. I don't like adorning myself or my place with brands. But I appreciate the fact that it's actually sturdy and well-built. They certainly went all in on the branding. Holy shit, this thing's huge. It looks bigger than I thought. I mean, I knew the exact uh, width of it, but still, this thing is incredibly heavy. I don't think it's longer than the one I had on my other computer, but it's huge. Let's take this protective stuff off. There's lots of protective plastic all over it. This thing is built like an absolute Tank. The craftsmanship is just, like, excessive, honestly. <laughs> this thing looks like you could run it over with a tank and it would be fine. Also, my 770 in my old computer. Um, if you noticed, it doesn't have any sort of a backplate. Like, if you look at the back of the video card, uh, this part, mine just had, like, the actual PCB with all sorts of electronic stuff on it. But apparently it's fairly common nowadays to have backplates on video cards. I don't know why. I don't know if it's for security, if it's only on higher end ones or what. But yeah, so this kind of greenish layer here in the middle, that's the PCB. And that's the only thing that was there for my card. But they've added this slightly raised backplate over it. Remove protective film before use. Yes, good idea. I don't want it blocking airflow. Plus, it will probably melt. 1,235 grams. Also known as 2.723 pounds. Jesus. Before I can put the video card in, I'm gonna need to remove these top three slots, whatever they're called. I'm scared, but I think it's time to put in the video card. Ah, uh, I kept hitting something, and I think what was stopping me from being able to go in is this. Can you see that? Yeah, this fan connector was stuck up here. So I moved this out of the way of the PCI Express slot, but this was stuck here on the, pieces, the other smaller PCI Express slots, and that was preventing the card from going down, I think. Um, let's get some more slack. Try number two. There we go. It's going in. Oh, just did it. Popped in. It all fits. It is a monster of a card in a lot of ways, but it's not extremely long. It looks extremely long in this case just because the case is so small, but it's honestly a pretty average length for a high-end card. There are some cards that can be 12 inches or so. This one's about 10 and a half. But yeah, let's look at the clearances. It's got a little bit of clearance between the CPU heatsink and the top of the video card. You can see there is a <laughs> about half a back slot distance between the intakes on the video card and the intakes on the bottom of the case. 
which again might be very very good this video card might be extraordinarily cool or it could be terrible i'm not sure yet and uh, there's plenty of room actually between the fans in the front and the end of the video card okay power is pretty much routed so i only need three separate power cords coming into the main part of the case and then got the in the back we're going to connect the led to the front of the case but coming in here we have the big one this thing this is the i think it's 24 pins that's the motherboard power it connects right there so it just comes in through this little slot and then just bends really hard and connects in there i would like to like shove the whole little bit of the slack in there but it is so incredibly tight and, and thick that it's really, really difficult to bend. Even just getting it to connect like I did there was very difficult. So I got that one. And then coming in below it, I have the, I've got the two 8-pin PCIe connectors that go to the video card. Coming in under the motherboard power, going down, and connecting here. I'm going to have to do something with this in just a second. And then the last one, I have actually coming in a different area it's kind of hard to show you but i thought everything would just i'd probably route everything through this hole here but turns out there's actually a small hole there just like right outside the front of the power supply and i thought that was perfect because the uh that's the cpu power is what that is and it just needs to run right over there to the top left so it was perfect to just pop down there so overall you can see it's pretty damn clean like this is definitely the cleanest i've ever done by far you can look down there and like you don't see it's not like a rat's nest is hidden just barely out of sight like pretty much no matter where you look as long as you don't look in the back of the case which i mean who would it looks pretty damn good this is a problem because this sticks out far past where the case is going to be the case's side as you can see so i think i'm gonna like tie this up with this so kind of like bind these together i think Probably be good enough. I think it'll still push on the uh, glass a tiny bit, but just a tiny bit. It should be able to pretty easily be pushed in. It's not that hard to push it at this point. God, that is such a beautiful build, isn't it? All right, one final thing to connect in the back of the case. We have this power that needs to connect to the front LEDs. Well, it doesn't matter which of these I connect to. There we go. Now I just got to pack all this in so that the, the back panel of the case can actually fit, because you can see there's not that much room. I can't have these wires like out here. They need to be more like in here or up here. Okay, I relocated most of the rat's nest up here instead of down here. I was going to just shove it in there, but then I realized that this is where the honeycomb pattern on this is. So if I just shoved it all into here right in front of the honeycomb pattern, then that's going to probably severely restrict airflow. So it's going to be a little bit restricted. You can't really help it because there's all these connections that go to the front panel that are just always going to be there a little bit. But certainly with all of this up here, it's vastly improved to how it was about to be. Here's the final piece. Will this go on without completely touching the uh, heat pipes or whatever? The fan or what have you? Pretty sure it's going to be fine. Yes. Okay. Well, look at that. It's sealed up. All the power connectors are connected. Everything's connected. The wiring looks great. Yeah, if you look like, oh, it's really hard to get a look at it, especially on camera. But yeah, those heat pipes poking out of the top of the heatsink are just barely, barely not touching the glass. Okay, well, I think that's the end of part three of my computer build. I'll give you a nice slow pan around the thing. I guess it's not a pan. Slow rotation around the thing. Um, I am going to go to bed because it's almost midnight. As much as I want to turn this thing on and see if it works, that's just a whole can of worms. Like, as soon as I turn it on, if it works, I'm going to want to install Windows. I'm going to want to install updates, etc., etc. Whoa, that looks like smoke. It looks like there's smoke on the front of it, but that's just a reflection off of off of this. Yeah, that's a gorgeous case. 
I really love it. All right, that's been part three of my computer build. I hope you've enjoyed. And when I come back for part four, we are done building, at least for now, assuming everything works okay. And we're gonna go into plugging it all in, testing it, making sure it works, etc., etc.